My job today is to show you how the simple component in front of me can help you automate a few tasks that you have been doing manually in Minecraft for ages. Uh, and I know that talking about components uh, can, be, can get a little bit abstract to some people, which is why I prepared a few examples. If you look in my inventory, I have uh, random quantities of items that I usually use in my adventures, uh, which I can basically drop all of those in here. And inside this chest, uh, there are quantities that I always want in my inventory. So I always like to have one stack of flight duration one and another stack of flight duration three. A few torches, uh, some, maybe apples, who cares? Uh, a stack of food, some wood, and ender pros, which is something that I use all the time. So those are basically consumables that I want all the time. And what the system does is if I take all of those items from this chest, which is what I usually do, the machine will detect it. You can see that lamps are blinking for now. Uh, and uh, this this chest will be, will be replenished with all those items again in the exact quantities that I want. So yeah, if I speed up the video a little bit. And all right, now the system is done. And as you can see, the items are all restored inside the chest waiting for the next time when I come in and just pick them all up. And I, I, as always, as you can see, the, the quantities are exactly the same and I can drop anything that I have used so far inside this chest and everything will be sorted automatically and stored inside the system. The next um, admittedly less polished example is going to do basically the same thing, but to a shulker box. You can see that the shulker box is empty currently and I can flip this lever. And then you can see all the tiled units starting uh, to act. And uh, those repeaters will also show you that they are pulsing. And uh, you will notice that they will be done really quickly. <laughs> and those are the items that, are, that they're placing uh, in there. So you can see that I connected the, the system that does the exact quantities to uh, a regular item sorter uh, on this side. So yeah, I already showed you guys the items uh, that you can see on this side with uh, the help of those item frames. And then here in the middle uh, is just a fast dropper line to bring all the items inside the shulker box. So if we click on it now, oh, I was not supposed to fall in there. If I click on it now, you can see how fast the items are loaded inside the shulker box. And uh, to make it even more resilient, uh, as you can see, the, the pulsers are all done. All the items that they need to place uh, are already placed, but they still have to be transported to the shulker box, uh, which is why you see that those comparators are on. So yeah, this is what I do here. Uh, once a, uh, once the, 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 hot, the dropper line is partially empty, or if it's empty enough, one section of it will turn off and uh, it will keep on uh, to make those items still go inside. Uh, the shulker box. And of course, there is a detection system down here that will, uh, that once this, not when the shulker box is full, this is important, but when the system is done sending items to the shulker box, it will automatically break it and store it inside um, this, uh, this chest in here. So uh, let me place this back so we don't lose this item. And uh, in the end, uh, the shulker box will be basically like this. It won't look like this, I will show you, but yeah, I configured this system to specifically always give me two stacks of sticky pistons, also two stacks of regular pistons, and just to show you that I can do any quantities, I can also have just 10 lamps, 8 furnaces, 16 uh, glazed terracotta, and just a few slabs, and those quantities will always be the same, and I can basically uh, I take a shulker box of these uh, with me and then uh, when I have an, a random number of items I can just place those shulker boxes in here and uh, it will be it will unload everything inside the uh, the item sorting system uh, and uh, the difference is if I pick one of those in here you will see that the items inside them are actually random. Let me place those side by side in here. So here I ordered those manually and here this is what the system actually builds. So the items are placed randomly because they actually get accumulated uh, at some points until they all get inside the shulker box. Uh, and uh, because of this, the droppers will place the items in a random order. But of course you don't need, uh, yeah, I just saw that the, the system was finished. It was finished placing that, that many items. And you can see the difference of this system with the fast uh, dropper line compared to this system where 
the items are dropped inside a hopper line. <laughs> hopper lines are much lower, and then the items get inside the item elevator, and then uh, and then they get inside the chest, as you can see in there. So yeah, uh, it will always build the shulker boxes for you, which could be useful even if you use mods uh, like Schematica, because it will give you the exact quantities, and those are very really easy to. Uh, to configure in here. As you can see, I modified this component in here uh, to give me more room so that I, a player can walk in here. And then I, in here, I place it all the same uh, item frames that I had before. And here inside those droppers is where I, uh, I want to configure my counters or pulse multiplier. So you can see this represents two stacks of any item. Could be armor, could be unstackable items or anything. So yeah, let's see for uh, the chests for the the, <laughs> the furnaces, for instance, only two, uh, only ten lamps, I guess. Yeah, I figure. And well, let me show you one final example of a more advanced use of this. And I left the path for the end. So what I have in front of me is a smart item shop. It's really simple to use. So let me do a demonstration. So here are the example items. So th these could be anything, could be wood, sand, whatever you want. And here's the interface you have to deal with. So I can pick some diamonds from here and I can place the diamonds in here. As you can see, it says pay in here. And then I just need to check for the price. So let's try this first one. So it's one diamond for one item. So I can just click the button. It will charge me. So we go down from 64 down to 63. And when this thing blinks, that means our item has been delivered. So there we are. So let's try something else. We are at 63. So let's try this item in here. It charges three diamonds and gives us 14 items. So we, we know that we have enough. Let's press the button and yeah, it charged three, it's done charging, and now uh, when the lamp blinks, the items are being delivered, and as you can see, it is quite fast. So as long as we have diamonds in here, we are going to be able to uh, buy whatever we want. Let's try, for instance, to put four items, four diamonds in there, uh, and then we were gonna try to buy this one. So it's four diamonds for 32, for 32 items. Just press the button, it will start charging, Okay, so this was uh, the exact quantity, right? Okay, so let's get our 32 items. And now I'm gonna prove that it's not going to deliver if you don't give it enough items. So let's try this one, maybe. So this is six diamonds. We're going to give it only two diamonds. <laughs> and then we're gonna ask for this item. So yeah, it charged it, but uh, this was not enough, so the product won't be delivered. Uh, this is work in progress, so for now you won't get your diamonds back, but in the next version of the system, of course, uh, it will give your items back uh, if, if it charged and didn't give you the product. And there's more to see, there's more. So uh, yeah, those costs all three, four, five, six, seven in a sequence, but this one costs 32 for 16 items. Uh, and this one will give you four stacks of items, which is pretty cool. So let me start by demonstrating this one. So let's give it uh, a, uh, a few items in there. Let's get this. It will be. It will quickly charge the player. It's already done, and it will now start delivering four stacks of items. And because it will take a long time, even with this fast delivery system, I will take this time to uh, show you the redstone around here. So yeah, looks quite complicated, but maybe maybe it is not as complicated, especially considering all the things that this is capable of doing, uh, and the fact that all of the, or all of your options of products are all tiled together, really nice uh, in here. So uh, let me show you everything. So here is where the storage is. So this is where. Uh, anyone with items would be, you would just have to allocate one of those slots. And here I have a mirror so that you can see which items go uh, go where. Uh, and you could also have unstackable items. You could use this to sell tools and armor if you wanted. This will just give this thing uh, the output, the right amount of pulses, and then you can sell things in here. Uh, and the 
for the special components that is the, the main goal of today's video you can see uh, a array of those up here so those are the cells that will charge the player the exact quantities and those <laughs> are the secondary uh, this is the secondary array of cells that will give the player the exact quantities that are asked uh, i don't see anything blinking in here uh, anymore so i think everything is ready in there so yeah as expected four stacks of items were delivered uh, and now we have 45 items in there let's see this charging 32 diamonds <laughs> uh, in exchange for only 16 items so yeah as you can see real quick i try to do everything really practical because in survival we don't want to waste time waiting anything around so 13 plus 32 is 45 so yeah it is now delivering and it's going to end soon so 16 items and you, you are ready to go and i also want to show you one really awesome feature of this thing uh let me put all of the, all of those items in there so those lamps indicate also they stock so for instance uh you can see that we are fully stocked in here uh, let me grab it. one redstone block in here and block uh, this uh, this hopper in there and that will empty this you can watch this lamp because this lamp tells you that we we still have items to sell so if we take out all of those items the lamp will go off so you immediately know that there are no items available to you and there is something else if you press the button it doesn't do anything <laughs> uh, if you press any of the buttons uh, you will basically move uh, you will activate the pistons and move the, the observers uh, to give a pulse and start the entire thing but when we're out of stock we remove the piston from place uh, from the, the original place so when the button is pressed it basically it's not connected to anything so it doesn't do anything so this is an extra precaution so uh when i finish this project the, this project it's going to be really amazing and i believe some of you guys might want a tutorial for this but uh yeah it has some limitations for now it's not ready but it just goes to show the possibilities guys this is a simple tileable component that can do those crazy amazing things for you so enough talk let's do it let's build it of course you can already see how this is built because this is a one wide design but there are some things that you need to understand during this build so yeah this is the input by the way and yeah here you can see the output it's really quick this one is programmed for uh, 10 pulses okay so uh you're going to you're going to need a eight wide area uh, and here, uh, where are my rails? I'll just pick from these. <laughs> and uh, uh, from here, yes, also this kind of uh, rail. So here in the middle, we just place four of those. Then we're gonna use the observer here. This is going to be our output, all right? Uh, and here is where we need the droppers. The droppers need to face each other. So you place one in here and another one there. And here you can also have a mirrored output depending on your project but if you don't need just place a solid block in there and from here on it's really easy to remember because it's one comparator on each side this is going to be pretty much symmetrical but not exactly and uh, we'll see why this is why I think this actually needs uh, a tutorial so uh, now we have to deal with some more observer placement so uh, on top of those we need uh, to place two observers facing up and here two more facing down so uh, and then here we can use the rails I will, I will I'll try to do this with you guys so uh, place three rails in here and then you need another type of rail to be on this other side so this signals don't mix and you will understand why okay so here is going to be the input I will tell you how this works by using this lever in here so now uh, one of the sides is locked so you can see that this is uh, really symmetrical uh, and it's not programmed to do anything so let's grab uh, proper programming items which are those ferns uh, and here since this side is locked this is where i'm gonna have my my items so i'm gonna place 10 items inside it okay so yeah as you can see because of the items this empowered but the, the torch keeps it powered uh, okay, so now uh, to test this thing, you can use uh, a dropper as your outputs. But a dropper here will not really work because it gets budded by this block. So what you can do is to extend it once again. And then here you can have your dropper. Here would be a good idea. You could also use 
uh, a repeater in there works as well all right so let's make this dropper face us and let's place a few items in there let's place 60 items and i have 10 items inside here right so if i flick the lever it will start pulsing and we are left with 47 items which means we spent 13. so 10 items make for 13 and fortunately this is a linear relation so the number of pulses you will get out of this thing is the number of items uh, inside the component plus three so uh, to get 10 pulses i would have seven items inside it uh, and this is seven okay so from 47 it should go down to 37 by flicking the lever all right and uh, here i need to explain why this is the way it is uh, the reason why I have uh, the, this being very much symmetrical is to get rid of the reset time. So you saw some of, some examples of how I can get uh, four stacks of items. I could, for instance, give the player uh, nine up to nine stacks of items. This is crazy. So the problem is, uh, once you send the items to the other dropper, uh, you would have to wait for this to reset so it would need to send all the nine stacks of items back to the first dropper uh, which is unacceptable uh, in, uh, in a practical system like the smart uh, sh uh, item shop so this the, the, great, the great advantage of the system is besides being tileable and silent uh, it doesn't require any reset time so let me show you how this goes now uh, we have 64 items in here right so let's configure this guy to do 32 pulses uh, and here we have 32 items so we have to exclude three items so be because this is always three minus then the other one right correct uh, and then we let's do 32 pulses so 32 pulses let's watch it so we have something to see while it happens you can see that it's quite quick okay so now it's down to 32 and i can already flick the lever and uh, generate 32 pulses more so yeah because the circuit works in both ways this is what this is my point you don't have to wait for items to return to the first dropper as soon as it's done pulsing you can already use the component again which is the great advantage of this thing and make make it really practical uh, but uh, there is one just one little problem guys that I think I should address in here I don't know exactly why this happens but it does okay so let's try to generate uh, five pulses only okay so we only need two items in there uh, okay and here let's place uh, 60 items so it makes it er makes everything easy to count all right uh, so if you flick the lever now so it gave five pulses as expected if we flick the lever again so five pulses again so this is consistent this is perfect but this is not so as you can see in this direction i had to use a repeater in here so uh so this is configured for seven pulses right so let's try to do the same in here by placing a repeater and uh, our dropper can go in there okay so this should be 10 pulses uh, and let me change this into um, uh, into a rail as well so let's get back to 64 items let's activate this thing and uh, yeah 10 pulses as expected let's activate it again and now we get 11 pulses or 9 pulses yes yes 9 pulses so yeah this is inconsistent and in order to fix that i just had to add one repeater in here you can see that uh, this happens when uh, the the long uh, the longitudinal axis is uh, facing west west uh, west and east axis and north and south you can just build it like so so the only difference is this one repeater so you can basically build it like this all the time and if you f if you have any problems with uh, this output in different levels of items depending on uh, if you flick it on or off uh, then you just place a repeater where you need it so sometimes it will be here maybe it will be there i haven't tested it at all but <laughs> this is what made it work so this is important so uh, you can see you can probably already uh, you probably already noticed that there is an yet another problem uh, because the number of pulses that this thing will generate is always the number of items plus three and the minimal number of items that we can place in here is one <laughs> then the the minimal number of pulses is four so this design can never be used 
for less than four pulses okay so there is a fix for that that I that I use it while with some of these and there uh, that I would uh, like also to mention so I think it goes like I, I'm trying to remember everything this is a pretty new design I have I don't have a lot of experience with it myself uh, and here I think it it's uh, something like this and okay uh, where is another repeater I don't have one so let me grab from my my thingy and here you have a repeater on four ticks and a piston okay so uh, this setup will uh, guarantee that the, the output the number of pulses that will be output is the same as the number of items so I can I can do this using a redstone line in here for instance okay let me grab a dropper to do the demonstration and uh, let me place 64 items in there and now we have only one item in here and only one pulse perfect uh, so let's try it for two pulses so two items so yeah this wasn't the wrong side <laughs> you, you always have to place your items where it's powered so if this side is powered you place your items in there so okay so three means three pulses so let's see that one two three yeah yeah so this is working so this is how you guarantee that this thing will always output the exact number of pulses and finally uh, another thing that you should know uh, if you power uh, a dropper in here using this device so uh, when the piston extends so the piston is here to, to basically ignore the first three pulses and then it's going to lift this thing and get butted so it will stay extended so if you power a dropper like this so you can have uh, your your uh, item filters coming from this way or you can have uh, comparators coming out of the, the dropper and everything uh, this will always work and also if uh, if this outputs to another repeater and goes through a redstone line uh, that goes to a solid block and then goes to basically a bunch of tiles that are uh, with items in so this will always work uh, what I what somehow doesn't work is if you place a observer in there so if for some reason you need your design to get pulses from this so the observer reads the the, the pulses that are being generated it could also generate pulses to radios directly yeah so if you're generating your pulses in, like this and basically having a bunch of uh, droppers like so it will not work it will not work so uh, in order to, to the in the easiest way to fix this is by by trial and error uh, in in the past in a video from the past I showed you guys how to make a setup that automatically calculates the number of items for you All right, so let me let me go let me do a, a quick review in here <laughs> if you if you do the simple design the number of pulses that it will output is always the number of items plus three if you want the number of pulses to be the exact number of items so it's easy to configure you have to add this piston setup down here in addition to uh, this circuit in there uh, and finally if you if you need to power things through uh, observers uh, the number of items I don't have a formula for it so I don't, I don't even maybe it's not linear because it's it it looks like something that you have to round numbers and such so uh, what you can do is to just place items in there and see how many items come out and then you, you, you keep adjusting it by uh, placing more and less items but the important thing is that you get the number of pulses that you want from this side and also using the, the, the observers make it a little bit slower I don't know exactly why this happens but uh, I feel like I need to let you know and finally I want to do uh, if you guys oh, need to take a picture from this let me clean this so yeah if you need to take a screenshot from this uh, and by the way if you want to tile multiple units of these you just have to to do more of those torches and you can activate a bunch of items at the same time like I did with uh, that example in there you just uh, every time you flick the lever it will it will generate all the pulses it's not something that you turn on and off it's something that every time it changes the state it gives out the, the correct amount of pulses uh, if you need this these should be completely independent like in the case of the, the smart uh, item shop you can power this using signal strength level one uh, or if you don't care about using pistons you can just have a piston right here and uh, yeah 
uh, when an ingp power decides the redstone block moves accordingly so yeah it will pulse and then this we, the important thing is when one side is pulsing the other one needs to be locked if you don't lock it it will pulse one side and then start pulsing the other one because the items will be <laughs> going back and forth so yeah it doesn't make sense so yeah those are the ways to power I, i'm trying to get you as m as much information as i possibly can and finally there is the super compact form of this uh, which basically shaves off this entire layer in there so uh, once you know where your output is you just place another uh, another observer uh, downwards then another one in here uh, and then here if you are playing in 1.13 you can use a note block i am playing 1.12 so i don't so this would not work for me but yeah in 1.13 this works and uh, you can also use a hopper in here to keep it silent uh, so this will work as well and uh, without the extra layer and if you want to go cheap you can use trapdoors yeah uh, just like this all right so yeah those are some of the ways that you can those are some of the var variations that you can do in order to achieve compactness uh simple views uh, or, or other goals that you may want uh, hopefully this is all the information that you need but don't be don't be shy don't be afraid to ask anything that you want i really hope that you guys appreciated this video you can show me with a like um, uh, please tell me in the comments if you liked uh, any of those examples i think those are very practical examples to use of this pulse multiplier uh, and finally thank you very much for watching guys see you next time goodbye